Good evening, football fans, and welcome to T.A. Wright Stadium in Savannah, Georgia, for tonight's MEAC football digital broadcast on ESPN3, featuring the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman and the Tigers of Savannah State. Hello, folks, alongside analyst Curtis Foster. I'm Spencer Turkin. Both the Wildcats and the Tigers find themselves at a crossroads in just the second game of the conference slate, with the winner of this game still in the hunt for a coveted potential Celebration Bowl bid. The Thune Cookman looks to rebound after a disappointing loss to Howard in the Circle City Classic up in Indianapolis last week. Terry Sims is going to need his reigning MEAC Special Teams Player of the Week, Jimmy Robinson, to strike early and often. And you, you know, Spencer, what a shootout they had in Indianapolis last week, 41-35 score. That was a lot of offense there. I wonder where the defense was at. Uh, certainly. <laughs> it, it was... There were points all over the place, and on the other sideline, head coach Eric Rayburn's ball club has played well early in games. Outscored just 14-7 to so far in the first quarter through three games. The Tigers are going to need to find a way to put together 60 minutes of football to be successful in this one. And you know, I agree with you. I mean, they have been very successful in the beginning of the ball game, the first half. Defense was very strong, put the opposite. Uh, the offense in a lot of situations that we should have scored, but we did not. We came up empty on a lot of them. So we got to put a complete game together today to make the successful game. Same thing with Mathieu and Cookman. They got to find some uh, uh, team stop scoring. You know, they got to play defense a little more and quit teams putting points on them. Well, we'll see if Devon Gibbons and T.J. Bell can get the Tigers' offense rolling for head coach Eric Rayburn. It's the Wildcats and the Tigers. One team will notch its first conference victory here on the marsh. We'll take a timeout. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. The captains are out on the field. Each team mission, seriously smart, seriously bold, seriously impressive. We are Savannah State University. Since 1890, Savannah State University has prepared... Vernon, you can stand right here. You can stand right here if you want. Welcome back out to T.A. Wright Stadium as Savannah State and Bethune-Cookman are set to kick things off here on the marsh. And it's the first home. conference game for the Savannah State Tigers. Crowd starting to file in. A massive rainstorm came through the area earlier today. You would have thought it would have scared off some of the folks out here, but instead they have come out to support this football team and see what this Tiger squad is all about. But you know, Spencer, all in all, this is football weather. Great day for some football. Hey, you got the cues over there barbecuing out. You got all the uh, fraternities over there barbecuing. You have some of the alumni barbecuing. Great day for some football. It certainly is as SSU will receive the opening kickoff working from right to left to begin the ball game. 77 degrees here at kickoff. As Giovanni Francis will boot this one away. It'll be Jermichael Baldwin and D'Angelo Durham back deep to receive. Our officials this evening. Referee Eric Green has given the signal, and we are ready to roll. 
here in Savannah, Georgia. Baldwin will find it just shy of the goal line and will work his way across the 10. He's inside the numbers to the 20, the 30, and is up to the 35, where he's finally planted at the 36 for, by far, his best return of the season. And that was a great turn by Baldwin there. And, you know, the thing about it, the, the Tigers are not used to starting the game off on offense, so here's both both teams get the opportunity to, chance, uh, to test their offense and the defense here on this play here. Well, Devon Gibbons will get the start at quarterback for Eric Rayburn's ball club. Both Gibbons and T.J. Bell have been switching off on every single drive as the signal caller for the Tigers. The handoff to McLeod, and he is up to the 39 where he's planted. Number 37, Jalen McLeod on the carry. Marquise Hendricks in on the stop. This is a tough defense by Methune, Cookman, Wildcats here. I know we have watched some of the Tigers game, and we know this offense needs a spark ball. It'll bring up second and seven with twin receivers to the left. Draw right to McLeod, and he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage as Hendricks again was in on the stop. You know, one thing about this Wildcat defense, it's a very strong defense. They're quick and they're strong. And the Tigers' offensive line is going to have their hands full with this defense of the Wildcats today. It's 4-3 base defense. Right now with five guys crowded up near that line. The Tigers stay on the ground. Will continue to move up towards the 45, does McLeod. And he is tackled at the 46. You know, Spencer, this is just like a, a, a chess match. You know, we, everybody's going to test each other at the beginning of the ball game. Let's see what you have on offense. Let's see what you have on defense. So we start opening up the playbooks. That'll bring up fourth and short, and the punt unit is out for the Tigers. It'll be Chandler Williams on to kick this one away. Kevon Mitchell, who's averaging 10 yards per return, will stand around the 14-yard line to await the punt. Williams gets a high end-over-end -end punt. The fair catch is signaled for and secured around this 18-yard line. So now here's the test for the Wildcats offense and the Tigers defense. Uh, as you have know, we have seen the Tigers defense. They're very, very strong at the beginning of the ball game. Let's see, can we maintain this, this high-powered scoring offense of Bethune-Cookman? We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Each team. Phantom Core joins the battle with the new Hades and 60-round capacity. Blasting with accurate, high-impact rival rounds. New Nerf Rival Hades. Experience the intensity. Welcome back to T.A. Wright Stadium. Nothing, nothing ball game here as the pass is tossed out to the right side for Jimmy Robinson. And he's able to race ahead for a first down on the first play from scrimmage for Bethune-Cookman. I tell you, Williams did a great job of hitting him out in the flats there. Williams will work with two receivers to the wide side of the field. Option play, hands the ball off to Ismi, and he is wrapped up immediately by Cam Brown, the freshman from Monroe, Georgia. Well, you know, the Tigers did a good job there stopping Ismi. Uh, what a name, Ismi. <laughs> but I tell you, but his first name is Tupac. How about that? Tupac Ismi. At 13 carries for 80 yards against Howard in the Circle City Classic at Lucas Oil Stadium. As Williams will clap, take the snap, play action. Looking, looking, heaves one over the middle of the field, and it drops to the turf, almost intercepted by Donald Rutledge. Well, that was a good throw by Williams and a good coverage by Rutledge there on the play. Malik Jackson was the intended receiver, and it brings up third down for Bethune-Cookman. The 
the redshirt junior will send trips to the left side of the formation. Searching along that right side. Good block pickup by the offensive line. He rolls out towards the Bethune-Cookman sideline. Stephen Banks giving chase and angles him out of bounds. Hey, you know, Spencer, that was definitely good coverage by the Tigers defense there. Uh, earlier, I saw Coach Glenn down there, and he was talking about how proud of he was his defensive backs and Conan, how they have grown from last year, and they're showing it today. So Jermichael Baldwin will look to return this punt, averaging 19.7 yards per return, good for number one in the conference as Giovanni Francis will punt this one away. 11.41 to go in this scoreless ball game. A big right-footed kick spiraling that's found by Baldwin at the 30. He retreats to the 25, has some open space along the left sideline. Has a lead blocker as he crosses midfield. He's to the 30, the 20, the 10, and is shoved out of bounds. And the Tigers are into the red zone as the punter, Giovanni Francis, was the last line of defense. That was great run by Baldwin there. Also, you got to give the Tigers... Uh, return team well blocking he follows block well that was great blocking on the special teams by the Tigers there we'll see who Eric Rayburn sends out to quarterback the offense it will be TJ Bell the red shirt sophomore who missed most of last season with a leg injury Travion Pratt will be the single receiver to the short side of the formation. Twins right. Bell, quarterback keeper along the left side. Having a hard time finding room, and he's able to gain a couple before he is sent to the boundary. And Marquise Hendricks again in on the stop. He has been phenomenal here in the early going for the BCU defense. Bring up second and goal from the eight. Shotgun snap back to Bell. Floats one over the middle. And the pass is complete to Paris Baker. And that, that was a great pass to Paris Baker. We, The Tigers have really been missing Paris Baker. He just came off injury. So definitely he's come in and showed how well he's needed in this offense that needed. But at the same time, let's not forget, Bethune Cookman is a team that can come from behind. And the Tigers strike first with T.J. Bell finding the senior from right here in Savannah in the back of the end zone. Giovanni Lugo on for the extra point. And he splits the uprights to make it a 7-0 ball game with 11-14 to go in the first quarter. And that is the first time this season that the Tigers have scored in the first quarter uh, leading opponents. So they're, they're up Each team ready. starts Home their journey on separate the roads. They're excited. But they all converge to one. One road to the championship. There will be revenge we'll head to a and break. redemption. Back after this. What we deliver <laughs> by delivering. The TA Wright Stadium, Spencer Turkin and Curtis Foster with you. 7-0 Savannah State leading Bethune-Cookman with 11-14 to go. In the first quarter as Giovanni Lugo is on to kick this one away to Jimmy Robinson. Who had three returns and two touchdowns last week against Howard. Became the MEAC Special Teams Player of the Week. This one to the 10, fielded by Robinson. He's across the 20, finds a lane along the outside and is wrapped up from behind, just ahead of the 30. So Akibius Williams and the Wildcats will make their way back out onto the field. First and 10 from the 32. Be very interested to see what they do on offense here between Cook and Wildcats. Doubles formation for the Wildcats. The handoff to Washington. He's still up after the first hit, dragging the pile, and is finally brought down at the 40. 
You know, the Tigers definitely have to wrap up on defense. And they had Washington wrapped in the backfield, and they just kind of let him wiggle out there. So we definitely got to make sure that they, they wrap up on the defense here. Cam Brown was the one who brought him to the turf. Trips right for Williams to the wide side of the field. Option right. Williams slides in at the 44. I tell you, the corners of the Tigers are doing a great job of covering the, the Wildcats receivers here. Williams is trying to find an answer. Where can he put the ball at? Twins left and right for the Wildcats. It'll be first and ten. Drops back into the pocket to the air. Looks to the right side and completes the pass to Kevon Mitchell. It'll be good for another first down for the Wildcats. You know, I was looking at Spencer how these Wildcats, they're so patient and so paused. It's, they're just taking their time. It's no rush. Nothing to get worried about. They're just going to take time, run out offense, and get what the Tigers give them. Savannah State playing off the ball in the secondary. Play action. Williams tosses it out to the left side. He's got Robinson, and he is brought down. Excuse me, to Jonathan Thomas. He is brought down just shy of the 35. And like the Wildcats are trying to nickel and dime the Tigers all the way down the field, you know, just take whatever is given to them. That's what they're doing with it. Ismi is the single back. Two receivers either side of the formation. Williams play action and overthrows his intended receiver, Jordan Rivers. Bring up third down with six to go. Shotgun snap is back to Williams, throws towards that far sideline and is able to complete the pass and keep the drive alive. As Malik Jackson hauled it in, John Wilson that was great on the break. shove. That was great recognition by Williams there to hit Jackson right there on the sideline on the out route. It'll bring up first and 10 from the 29. Four down linemen for the Tigers. Williams goes play action, tries to pump fake, is able to get away from Banks and will take off running. He's drilled at the 15. It'll be good for another first down as Donald Rutledge applied the hit. Well, I, I, I tell you, Williams uh, did a move on Banks and let Banks' whole foot almost like get stuck in the carpet there. And Williams did a good job getting away from it. Banks is a big kid. I wouldn't want to hit, face him. It looked like the Tigers were about to get their fifth sack of the season, but Williams able to use his athleticism to avoid Stephen Banks. As he's brought down by a pack of Tigers is Tupac Ismi. Brown was the first one in. It'll bring up second and six. Well, this Tiger defense has struggled so far this season, giving up 53.3 points per game. As the option handoff is taken by Ismi, and he is inside the 10 to the five. I like that name, Ismi. Give me the ball and let me is me this Tiger defense here. It'll bring up first and goal from the five. Some miscommunication in the backfield. Williams will keep it, reaches for the end zone, and is unable to get in. He's stopped just shy by John Wilson. Wilson did a great job fighting off the block to make that block to stop Williams from going into the end zone. So that was good coverage by uh, John Wilson there. Michael Police is into the game for an extra lineman. There is a flag on the field in the end zone. As Eric Green will address the crowd. And then 
action was against the defense. And so Bethune-Cookman will get another crack at first down here with goal to go. 7-18 to play in the first quarter. The Tigers leading at 7-0. SSU has been a good first quarter team this year. This one is stopped in the backfield by that front seven of the Tigers. You know, the, the Tigers have come up big on a couple of plays this year, and, and hopefully that they could be another one that can come up big. But, you know, you also have a bethune Cookman team that when they get down that red stone, it's hard to keep them out of there. Uh, it certainly is. As the Tigers have now matched the total points of their opponents in the first quarter, 14 apiece. There is an injured Tiger on the field. And it is number 67, Michael Police, who checked into the game on the last play. Curtis, you mentioned the red zone offense of Bethune-Cookman. 9 for 11 so far this season in the red zone. Good for fifth in the conference. The Tigers' defense has had one stop in the red zone. They've allowed 15 of 16 scores. Well, you know, the, you know, you have both teams right here. They, they, they're trying to get that. It's a tech man. Really, what's happening? Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Back out at T.A. Wright Stadium. Savannah State with a 7-0 lead. Bethune-Cookman threatening second and goal. The handoff to Ismi, and he is... Stop short of the goal line. William Campbell came up with the tackle. It'll bring up third and goal from the one. Williams tries to take it himself. Is he in? Officials will sort this pile out. Looked like he shoved his nose in there, yet to get an official signal. And he stopped short. The spot is short of the goal line. It'll bring up fourth down for Bethune-Cookman with goal to go. What a great job by the Tigers defense there, putting a hole on their home. And that's why they call it home court, but it's their home goal right now. They're trying to stop him from getting in. Williams back under center. He'll try again. This time he leans forward and is into the end zone. Give him six. Well, we talked about it earlier. This this McCookman team would definitely strike back after you score. Remember, they put up 35 points against a, a shootout against Howard on last week, 41-35. They've also put up 79 points this season, too, as well. So this offense can score. They certainly can, and they'll bring on Uriel Hernandez, the preseason Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference first team kicker. Who was able to split the uprights and tie the ball game at seven. So we're all tied up here in Savannah. After a 68-yard drive down the field for Bethune-Cookman. Five thirty to go here in the first. As D'Angelo Durham and Jamichael Baldwin will look to field this kickoff from Giovanni Francis. Bethune-Cookman's offense, number one in the conference. 36.2 points per game coming into today. Well, I, I tell you what, Spencer, we may be looking for a, a one whale of a ball game today here. Both teams are hungry. Both teams trying to get that one win in the MEAC. So, you know, both teams going to play hard today. Today's game crucial as both teams still trying to stay alive for that potential celebration bowl bid. Baldwin will field it just shy of the goal line. Able to head to the 15, finds a hole at the 20, spins out of the first tackle at the 25. 
Races towards the near sideline at the 40 and is angled out of bounds around midfield. Another strong return for the sophomore, Jamichael Baldwin. Well, I tell you what, Spencer, Baldwin is trying to send a message to Jamie Robinson, letting him know that, hey, I can do the same thing that you can do. So the Tiger offense will head back out onto the field. Devon Gibbons will be the signal caller for Eric Rayburn in this tied ball game. It'll bring up first and 10 from the 49. Play action. Gibbons sets his feet, tosses for Hagen, and leads them a little too far on the other side of midfield. One thing I noticed with the Tigers are doing here, they're they're staying with one quarterback. You know, and normally when we see them, they're basically in and out, in and out each series. 5-12 to go in the first 7-7 ball game. Gibbons will send three receivers to the wide side of the field. And in motion is kick lighter. He will take the jet sweep. Will cross midfield and is brought down at the 45 by Marquise Hendricks. And Hendricks already with four tackles on the day. It'll bring up third and four for the Tigers. Kick lighter, takes the handoff, and is dropped in the backfield by Hendricks again, who continues to make his name known here in Savannah. That'll bring up fourth down for the Tigers, who are forced to punt. Kevon Mitchell is back deep, awaiting the Williams punt. More on the play clock. Snap is clean. And a high wobbly punt that will go out of bounds around the 25. The spot will come up to the 26. And that's where Kevius Williams will take over. Ain't that Spencer? The Tigers look like they was off and running to the races on a great return by Baldwin. But the Thule Cooper had another answer for them when they came in. No, you just got that, but they, we're going to put a hold to your offense here. So great job by the Wildcats defense. Uh, that has been a problem for Savannah State this year. They've made big plays but have not been able to capitalize on them by turning them into points. Has been a quarterback switch. It's David Israel who has come in to lead the offense now. Number 34, Isaac Washington. As Isaac Washington took the handoff. Must be a thing in the media with the switching of quarterbacks. You know, you see a lot of that. <laughs> Everybody's trying to find the hot hand. Yes. And right now, both teams need this win. You don't want to start off the conference season 0 and 2. So Israel will work from the gun. The option is broken up by Banks initially, but Israel able to tuck it and run it back in between the sticks. Rutledge was there to cut off the angle. This tight team has played this Wildcat team very tough over the years. Uh, uh, in 2016, the Tigers came out victorious in the fought overtime game that they played. It'll bring up third and a short eight. Israel looking, throws short for Mitchell. And that'll bring up fourth down so that Tigers front four continues to apply the pressure to the Bethune-Cookman offense. A quick three and out for the Wildcats. And now Jermichael Baldwin is back deep and will try and put the Tigers in some decent field position for this next drive. Ronnie 
Francis, the senior, back on to punt. A low snap, bobbled, gets the punt off. It's a high beauty. Baldwin will call for the fair catch at the 15. And Giovanni Francis was able to recover off that bad snap and get a phenomenal punt off. Yes, he did, and the Tigers didn't put any pressure on him at all. He had an opportunity to gather himself again and get the punt off on a great quick, and that, that, that took away from Baldwin's chance of returning it. And that means T.J. Bell will have a long field to travel. 85 yards to pay dirt. Redshirt sophomore already has one touchdown pass today. He throws over the middle, and it goes off the hands of his receiver, Kicklider. I believe Kicklider heard some footsteps there. <laughs> the no huddle offense for the Tigers working quickly. Empty set. With Tyler Hagen, the stand up tight end. Near the Savannah State sideline in the slot. Quarterback keeper. Bell lowers his shoulder and is drilled just shy of the 20. Devin James did a great job of coming and filling the hole there for the Wildcats there. Uh, it was a hole there for a second, and James came right in and plugged it. Rashad Saxton is in as the tailback. Third and six for the Tigers. Play action. Bell rolls out to the far side, sets his feet, looking towards the near side, and he has to hit the turf as the Wildcat defensive front was closing in. And so both teams will trade three and outs, and the punt unit is back on for the Tigers. And, you know, Bell has some receivers open, but he just could not make that turn that he needed to throw the ball to, to square up and really put the ball where he needed to be. Kevon Mitchell is hovering around midfield as Williams will punt this one from his own end zone. And Eric Rayburn needs a timeout. as the Tigers were short a man on the field. And that's a very uncostly timeout. They did not need that one there. 111 to go here in the first quarter. It's a 7-7 ball game. Curtis, we've seen one touchdown drive from each team. Obviously the Tigers, a short one, had great field position. What are you seeing from this Bethune-Cookman team, though, that allows them to score so many points so far this season? Well, the thing is, you, you don't want to let this Bethune-Cookman team get momentum here in your home stadium here because this team, can they can rally off some points when need to be. You know, But the Tigers' defense is doing a great job, and hopefully that they can maintain this throughout the football game and have a close game here, both teams playing hard. Junior Williams takes the high snap and gets off a muff punt that will head into the Savannah State bench right around the 30-yard line. So the Wildcats are going to have tremendous field position to begin this next drive with 102 remaining in the first quarter. I tell you, Spencer, that was not a great punt at all there. And that's in favor of the Wildcats there because, like you say, they give them opportunity. They're in the territory of the Tigers right now and have opportunity to maybe put some points on the board, six or three points, maybe the whole seven. We never know. But you're challenging this Tiger defense again, once again. So a short field that will start with first and ten from the 30 for Akevius Williams. Redshirt Jr. did not lead the offense on the last drive. We'll send trips to the left side. The handoff to Ismi as he races down to the 26. I got to keep calling that Ismi. I might see that all night. Ismi, Ismi. <laughs> 
And Tupac, the first name, Tupac is me. <laughs> All eyes on me. Bringing it back to the 90s. As Evan McGee was in on the stop. The Wildcats keep it on the ground this time. The Tigers were able to sniff them out. Stephen Banks was the first one in. It'll bring up third and seven for the Wildcats. 14 seconds remaining. We'll see if BCU can get a playoff before the end of the quarter. Williams looks left, throws. Is able to check down and complete the pass. John Wilson was able to make the stop on with Darian Wilson. <laughs> and that will do it for the end of the first quarter. 7-7 seven to seven at the end of the first. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. We were knotted at 7 between Bethune-Cookman and Savannah State. Williams on fourth down. Tosses for the end zone, and Mitchell hauls it in. Wow, what a pass by Williams to Mitchell there. You cannot doubt that out any better. No better than that. 13-7, the Wildcats out in front on the first play of the second quarter. Uriel Hernandez on for the extra point. The snap is back, hold is down, the kick is good, and the Cats are out in front 14 to 7. How about Kevon Mitchell getting that foot in in the back corner of the end zone for his third touchdown of the season. Well, he did a great job of getting that foot in. And also, you got to say, a great pass by Williams. You can't put it no better than that. So the Tigers find themselves behind for the first time in this ball game after striking first. Baldwin and Durham back deep to receive the Francis kickoff. As the lights begin to take effect here at T.A. Wright Stadium, sundown set for 7-11 this evening in Savannah. A beautiful 77-degree evening on the marsh. And over end kickoff is fielded by Baldwin, and he'll take it out of the end zone. To the 20 where he's tripped up. And it'll be marked at the 21. Well, the, the, the Wildcats told Baldwin they're not going to have none of this time. Not this time here, son. We, we're coming down, and, and we, we're going to smash that in. They did a great job on coverage there. By far his shortest return of the evening on a kickoff. Travion Pratt is the flanker along the numbers, the left side. As Gibbons is the quarterback. Looks towards that far sideline, throws over the middle, and the pass is almost intercepted as Jermichael Baldwin was the intended receiver. Trevor Merrick was the one who broke it up. I, I see Baldwin is hollering for a flag, but that was great defense covered by Merrick that he was all over him. I mean, great coverage. And no flag there, no, none in sight whatsoever. There was no space between those two. Stacked receivers along that left sideline. Second and ten. Play action. Gibbons rolls out, has nowhere to go, and is able to somehow get back to the line of scrimmage. Gibbons on the 
bring up third down and about 10 to go. Gibbons working with four wide outs. Gets the new play from the sideline. Looking deep. Heaves one along that left side, and it is caught by Travion Pratt. What a catch by the freshman, Travion Pratt. The freshman saw the ball was over him, went and grabbed it, and was able to track it down and haul it in. So the Tigers are into Wildcat territory and some movement along the line of scrimmage. With both teams pointing at each other. It appeared that the Wildcats moved first, but we'll let the officials and our white cap, Eric Green, sort this thing out. Like it's going to be offside against the Wildcats. It is indeed an offsides call, and with 13.30 to go here in the second quarter, it'll bring up first and five. The handoff breaks free, does McLeod across the 35. And he's tackled. At the 32. Man, that was some strong running by McLeod. It's a, a sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. At 24 yards and a score against FAMU last week. It's first and 10 from the 32. Option right, the pitch to McLeod. He's able to bring the pile with him inside the 30. And is brought to the ground around the 28. Second and six upcoming for the Tigers who work quickly. Trying to catch the Bethune-Cookman defense on their heels. Two receivers either side of the formation for the Tigers. The single back is McLeod. Three-step drop, throws over the middle, and it's batted and caught by Kicklighter, who will take off down the sideline and into the end zone. <laughs> wow. Give him six. You cannot ask for a trick play better than that. That was a dipsy doozy flip, flop, flop. Kicklighter say, you don't want it, I'll take it. And let off to the races, Kicklighter win. So the Tigers <laughs> have a chance to tie pending the extra point. Lugo is on for the PAT. He's two for three this season. Williams to hold. The low snap off the ground, and the kick is good. So the Tigers able to recover. The Chandler Williams able to scoop that thing off the ground and tie the ball game at 14. We'll take a timeout on the field. We're tying at 14 here on ESPN3. Oh, yeah. What we deliver by delivering. In Savannah, we're tied at 14 between the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman and the Tigers of Savannah State with 11.59 to go. Quite the play wow. by James Kicklighter, able to snag that thing off the palms of his teammate, Trevion Pratt, and take it into the end zone. Well, it seemed like we about to have a fight at the OK Ted right field here in Savannah, Georgia, called the Seaport Sugar City. So we got to get ready, get ready. It's going to be a ball burner here. Well, the Tigers have to get ready for this potential return from Jimmy Robinson. Takes it along the far seam, able to scoot through the coverage at first, but is wrapped up around the 26 and brought down. Stavion Stevenson, the tight end, in on special teams with the stop. Now, the thing is, can Cookman come back and answer? So, you know, this team has always been able to come back and answer to a score. So will the Tigers stop them, or will the Cookman come back and strike back at them? 
You know, these tigers, these cats like to go at each other. They're always striking and striking at each other. Well, this Bethune-Cookman team has used the pass offense more than the run offense so far this season. And Akebius Williams is in to lead the Wildcat O. He'll open up and throw to the top of the screen. And as Malik Jackson was the one who hauled it in, John Wilson with the stop. Bring up second and four. Williams with the delayed handoff to Ismi as he crosses the 40 and earns himself a first down. Cam Brown was able to wrap him up. And now the Wildcats using that high-tempo offense to try and catch the Tigers off guard. Three receivers to the bottom of the set. Offset pistol. A handoff to Ismi, off right tackle, and he's able to get himself a first down. I, t- I tell you, Ismi said, give me the rock and let me run with it. I'll show you how the cat's proud. So far today, 23 yards for Ismi. Washington this time on the run, and he's able to gain a couple before being shoved out of bounds by Donald Rutledge. Now that's a good, tough running by Washington there. Great play by Rutgers, too. Second and nine for the Wildcats. Two receivers either side. Thomas is slot left. We have a whistle on the field. And it's a timeout taken by Bethune-Cookman. We'll head to a break on ESPN3. Chris Foster with you on a beautiful evening down by the river. Williams rolls out, throws for Mitchell, who's able to haul it in around the 40. And we'll race down to the 36. Did they give him the first? Balls on the 38 yard line. Yes, they did. They did. It will be a first down. Williams working quickly. Under pressure. Throws, and it skips off the turf before Malik Jackson could bring it in. I tell you, Cooper was going so fast, they didn't give him a chance to set up the down marker. They, I'm they surprised said, they let him move. Hey, they said, let's go, baby. You know, they, they got a song called, let's go, Wildcats. So they wanted, let's go with the Cats against the Tigers here. Uh, the band not in attendance today. Uh, we were told getting ready for homecoming back in Daytona. Four wide formation, trips to the right of Williams. They'll bring up second and ten. Pressure coming, throws over the middle, and completes the pass to Stefan Francois, the Miramar, Florida native. Last year, Francois had one grab for 20 yards against the Tigers. It's third and one for the Wildcats. The handoff to the right side is good for the first down. So Darian Wilson, the third string running back in to gain the necessary yardage to keep the drive alive. And now the Wildcats will pick up the pace. The handoff is good for another first down as Wilson continues to follow the right side of the offensive line. Well, it looks like the Wildcats are starting to open up these Tiger Claws a little bit and let their little Cubs run through them. Wildcats keep it on the ground for Ismi. He's cut down after a couple. Isaiah Bennett able to 
assist on the tackle. It'll bring up second and five. The center judge Mark Comer making sure that the Wildcats don't work too quickly. And that everybody has an ample amount of time to make the substitutions. The red shirt junior rolls out towards the near side. Under pressure, he's hit as he throws and throws out the side of the end zone. Incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Stephen Greaves, the freshman, applying the initial pressure. And that was smart thinking of Williams getting rid of the ball, not to take a sack. Third and five for the Wildcats. 7.50 to play. In the second quarter, and what's been a great ball game so far. Tied at 14. Ismi is the single back. Delayed handoff, and Ismi trips over himself around that first down marker. Lost an edge as he tried turning the corner. I tell you, this Ismi guy, he can fly. He you certainly know, can. with a name like Tupac, you got to do something. <laughs> you got to carry out that name, Tupac. And Ismi came up a yard short. And it'll bring up fourth and about a half a yard. Williams working from the gun. And it's Washington, pulls it. And he stops short. It'll be a turnover on downs. John Wilson was able to prevent the drive from continuing. And the Tigers, with some much needed life, will head back out onto the field. Our Tigers did a great job there. That's how to stiffen up your claws and, and you know, because you're supposed to be king of the jungle right now. We're not playing the Lions, we're playing the Wildcats. See, the Lions are supposed to be the king of the jungle. But when the Lions are absent, then you got the Tigers. And Wildcats is just a little something that just roam around in the forest somewhere. So the, the Tigers have clawed down and maintained. McLeod on the handoff, and he is wrapped up. And his forward progress was stopped. And who else but Marquise Hendricks? Tigers will face second and ten. Twins right. The counter to McLeod, and he is shoved out of bounds. Kennedy and Dukeway on the stop. Bring up third and ten now for the Tigers, who are pinned deep in their own end. Paris Baker, who hauled in the first touchdown for the Tigers, is slot left. The handoff to McLeod on the conservative play call. And his forward progress is stopped, and the Tigers are going to punt this one away. Holy macaroni. The Wildcats must have heard me up here talking. They said, no, sir, you're wrong. This is not the Tigers' jungle. This is the Wildcats, and we are wild. The Tigers growl, but we are wild, and we are swift. So now we're going to challenge you. So great stop by the Wildcats. Kevon Mitchell is back deep to receive the punt. It'll be Giovanni Lugo on this time to boot this away. And he gets a high, spiraling kick off. It'll bounce in Wildcat territory, take a Tiger roll inside the 40. And will be downed around the 38. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. USA. That's our thing. 
Welcome back to T.A. Wright Stadium as Bethune-Cookman and Savannah State are tied at 14 with 4.57 to go in the first half in what has been a back-and-forth ball game between two teams searching for their first conference victory. Williams is the quarterback. He'll hand the ball off to Isaac Washington. No gain on the play. It'll bring up second and ten. This Bethune-Cookman Wildcat offense has struggled on the ground. Coming into today's seventh in the conference. In rushing offense. Trips right for Williams. Rolls out towards the Cookman sideline. Throws and will throw it into his own bench. As the Tiger secondary had everybody covered up. Well, you know, you, you got to give this Tigers defense a lot of credit here. They're maintaining, you know, what they need to be doing, and they're trying to stop this Wildcats. Both defense are playing pretty tough right now. It's third down for the Wildcats. Williams. Throw the ball to Washington, who's able to scoot away from a tackler at the 40 up to the 45 and is taken down at midfield. It'll be good for a Wildcat first down. And that was a smart play by the Wildcats that's coming up with a screen play. I would have never thought anything like that, but with the rush coming on the third down, that was a great play calling by the coaching staff or uh, the Wildcat, Bethune Cutman. And the Wildcats are now three for eight on third down today. Williams goes play action and completes his pass to Stefan Francois. He was able to move the chains yet again for the Wildcats. It's the 14th first down for the Wildcats today. The delayed counter to Ismi, who is able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, that didn't fool the Tigers defense at all there. They were sitting there waiting on that one. Bethune Cookman has a lineman that is hobbling around. It's Dwayne Brown, the preseason first team all conference selection. Second and ten for the Wildcats. Francois is the middle receiver in the trips formation left. Williams brings in the snap, looks towards the left side under pressure, throws towards the sideline, and it is brought in by Kyrie Wallace, the junior, out of Los Angeles, California. And that will extend the drive yet again and move the chains. And that was good recognition by Williams being patient, coming out trying to find his receiver. He did a great job of being patient and, and recognizing where his receiver was at. Two by two set for the Wildcats. The handoff to Ismi runs into the offensive line and is able to continue on. Bring up second down. Williams will look towards his sideline for a new play. Second and six. Quarterback keeper Williams to the 20. And is driven down by a pack of Tigers inside the red zone. Stephen Greaves was able to bring him in. First and 10 for the Wildcats from the 18. as the Wildcats are now knocking on the doorstep. 
Jimmy Robinson on the carry. And it's first and goal. We have a timeout taken by Savannah State. So we have first and goal from the three for the Wildcats. First and goal from the three for the Wildcats as the Tigers are taking a timeout to try and regain their breath. This Wildcat team has been able to move down the field very quickly. When they get a drive going, they almost seem unstoppable. Yes, and that is so true. It has taken the air out of this Tigers defense. So you're right. They had the Rayburn said he had to call a timeout to get get the air back up on these guys, get their feet back up on a little bit. So hey, this is a big, big series right here for this Tigers going into the half. We want to make sure we stop because the Cookman received the ball on on the second half coming out. So definitely, you want to stop him here. You don't want him to score here. But we've also seen this Tiger defense play very well when backed up against their own end zone. Yes, they have been. Well, Darian Wilson is the running back. The handoff goes to the right side and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. I tell you, these Tigers do a great job of digging in deep with those Tiger paws and just digging into this turf here and, and putting their stop against the Wildcats. The Wildcats do have two timeouts and yet not using one here with 14 seconds and ticking to go. Quarterback keeper reaches for the corner and Williams is into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, Wildcats. Rob, wow, what a great job by Williams going around the corner, getting into the corner of the end zone. TD, baby, by the Wildcats. 20 to 14, BCU takes the lead before both squads head to the locker room for the half. Uriel Hernandez is on for the PAT. Snap is back, hold is down, the kick is good. And with seven seconds remaining in the first half, the Wildcats out ahead 21-14. And as you mentioned, Curtis, BCU will indeed receive the opening kickoff of the second half. And you know, the thing about it, you, you got to give the BC Cats credit for maintaining this two-minute drive going in the score. It looked like it was dim, but they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And that's how the Cats are in the wild in the jungle. You never know where they come from. They can hit you from all sides, all area. They just strike at you. Michael Baldwin and D'Angelo Durham will have a chance to try and put this one into the end zone off the return and give the Tigers a little bit of life heading into that locker room. Expect a shorter kick here as Uriel Hernandez, who usually does not handle the kickoff duties, will indeed put this one on the tee for the Wildcats. Senior approaches the football and will squib kick. And the Tigers will go ahead and fall to the ground. It was Stavion Stevenson who fielded it. So it'll be first and ten for the Tigers from the 24-yard line. Well, the thing in here is just take a knee and take it into the halftime and get ready, make some adjustments, and come out the second half and let's see what the Tigers can do. It does appear to be the kneel down formation. As Gibbons will drop down to that knee, and both teams will head to their respective locker rooms. Thune Cookman able to strike late in the first half. Makes it a 21-14 ball game ahead of Savannah State. Curtis, we've seen some really extravagant plays from both ball clubs, and we've also seen these two teams make some mistakes 
What is one thing that each team needs to clean up as they head to the half? Well, the thing is, is is, is defensive, and we got to make plays. I mean, the, both offenses got to make plays. Defense is doing a great job. We can't maintain the defense out on the field as long. I also think that for us on the Tiger side, we got to be more aggressive with the football. We can't play conservative football. We need to attack. I mean, if we're not attacking, it's giving the advantage to the Wildcats to come up. Because once that Wildcat team strike and they strike more and again, we may have a little problem with the Tigers here getting back into this ball game. Well, 21-14 is our score. We'll head to a timeout here on ESPN3. Do more with your data. Choose Watson. Hello. The best AI for the job. Spencer Turkin with you. 21-14. Bethune-Cookman leading Savannah State at the half. Now joined by outgoing athletic director Sterling Stewart. Well, Sterling, uh, congratulations on your new job on your way to University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thank you. Uh, should be uh, quite the experience. I know you'll be leading a Division One hockey team while you're up there. Yes. No football. So we'll be, um, we have hockey. Um, Division One, and we're looking forward to it. Never, I've never had hockey before, so I'm looking forward to new challenges. Well, uh, you're taking in a game here as a fan today. Uh, what has this experience been like? I know that usually you're running around uh, like a chicken without a head, trying to meet up with donors and alums and, and, and keep things going here. Yeah, um, it's a new experience. I've been here seven years, and I've never experienced a game in this way before. So it's new. It's, it's refreshing. I think I might do this often. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you'll be able to actually catch football games as a football as a football fan because yes. uh, your your new school, as you mentioned, does not play Division One football. Uh, so uh, a chance to see football uh, from a fan's perspective, and you've seen now what Eric Rayburn and, and this coaching staff has been able to build up here in the last two plus years. Right. Uh, is this what you expected out of him when you brought him to campus? I did. Um, I expected him to bring organization and structure, and he has. Um, I thought this year it could go either way. Um, we are good enough to be really good and not good enough to, be, to, to not be good uh, because we're young with, limited, with, with not a whole lot of depth. Um, and so we've had a couple injuries. Um, Paris Baker, 85, his first game. He scores a touchdown. First catch. His first catch of the season. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think they're on the right – I think they're headed in the right direction. Uh, well, you've been here for a long time now. Uh, you've seen some things change over the years. What's the accomplishment that you're most proud of uh, since you've been on this campus? Changing the, the, the culture and the mindset of student-athletes um, regarding academics. And this past year – we had more than 80 student athletes graduate um, this past spring. It was 55. So that is that is something that I'm, I'm super um, excited about. And of course, win, winning always helps. We've won in a number of sports, um, but getting students to come in and believe that they can be a college graduate while play, playing or uh, participating in athletics is something that I'm most proud of. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about, student Correct. athlete. And that Correct. student part, I know at some places does get lost on people, but yes. uh, I know that that's been a priority of yours uh, yes. since you got here, that it really is a an all-encompassing act. It's student athlete, athlete. through and through. Through and through. Um, it, it is so refreshing when young people graduate and come and say that, you helped me get to this point. Thank you. Uh, we have about 10 young men that play football that's down there now that they're like my sons. And, and to, I spoke to a couple of them at volleyball yesterday. Uh, they're, going, they're going in the Navy. They're, they're in their careers. They're at the beginning of their careers. They're budding careers. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's so refreshing. It brings back our memories when I was that age. And put goosebumps on my on my hand. So when things like that happen, does that remind you why you got into college athletics? It does. It makes everything. It makes all the other issues uh, or challenges go away because you, you know you've changed the lives of one person that will change the life of many others. So yes, it does. As you head to Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, this is a program that's seen its own hardships. It's a very difficult place to get to. Uh, how do you try and overcome these obstacles to make it happen? To make it happen, bring the same work, hard work, effort, um, and dedication that we have here. Uh, we've improved 
the product here, and we're going to take that blueprint and try to apply it there. Well, Sterling, we appreciate the time. Best of luck to you, thank you. up in Alaska, and we thank you for everything you've done for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and Savannah State. We'll be back after this on ESPN3. Welcome back out to Savannah. Spencer Turkin with you. Bethune-Cookman leading Savannah State 21-14 here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Quick look at our first half statistics. Bethune-Cookman outgaining Savannah State 243-90 to on 17 first downs compared to just three for the Tigers. 100 yards rushing for BCU, 143 yards passing. Just 17 yards on the ground for the Tigers, 73 through the air. Both teams with just one penalty apiece. BCU with 19 minutes and 24 seconds of possession time. Three of eight on third down. Fourth down conversions, two of three. The Tigers just one of five on third down and have yet to attempt a fourth down play from scrimmage. Take a look quickly at our Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference standings heading into the weekend. North Carolina A&T was sitting atop the conference with Howard and Florida A&M. Norfolk State, North Carolina Central had yet to play a game. And Bethune-Cookman, Morgan State, South Carolina State, Delaware State, and Savannah State all at the bottom of the league. scoreboard update for you. Norfolk State took care of Delaware State 54-28 earlier today. Florida A&M demolished North Carolina Central 55-14 and on Thursday night it was North Carolina A&T taking care of South Carolina State 31-16. Our score here in Savannah 21-14 with the Wildcats ahead of the Tigers. And what is the first home game of the season for Savannah State? We'll take a timeout here in Savannah. You're watching Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football on ESPN3. An eight-yard touchdown pass from T.J. Bell to Paris Baker. And then Bethune-Cookman with 14 straight points. Akevius Williams, a one-yard run into the end zone. And Kevon Mitchell caught a 25-yard strike from Williams. And James Kicklighter was able to find the end zone off the hands of Travion Pratt and run that ball in. And Akevius Williams able to finish up the scoring with a four-yard run with seven seconds remaining in the second quarter. We'll send it to another quick break and be back with the second half of action right here on ESPN3. day imagine what could happen the rest of the week welcome back to savannah state 21 14 bethune cookman with the lead as the wildcats will receive the kickoff here in the second half but we look for an exciting second half here because uh the fact is this is where the tigers have struggled in the past few games in the second half, and the Cookman has came on fire, scoring points. So this is going to be a very interesting second half here. Robinson receives the kickoff at the 10. He'll bring it towards the near side. He's got the 25, the 30, has a lane to roll. He's to the 40, the 45, and is tackled around midfield. And Jimmy Robinson's success on kickoff returns continues after a stellar week. Last week up in Indianapolis, 
he continues to find those running lanes. Yes, he did, and he, he found a spot there within the Tigers' gap hole, and they kick off the team, so he did a great job returning. Matter of fact, they're just right at the 50-yard line. So the ball is spotted at midfield as the BCU offense will hit the field. Akevius Williams is the signal caller. 13 of 18 for 143 yards in the first half. The handoff comes towards the near side for Ismi, and he is tackled at the first down marker. I tell you, Ismi has definitely been the workhorse tonight. He's been working. I tell you, I don't know what they serving him after the game. I don't know if it's uh, Bojangles or what it is, but he deserves the Chick-fil-A, whatever they're going to get after the game because he's been working hard tonight. He's up to 55 yards on the evening, rushing as the option play. Williams keeps it and will be angled out of bounds around the 36-yard line. William Campbell was the one who applied the pressure. And William, he, he did a great job as getting around that corner there. We thought that he was stopped in the backfield there. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how he got out of that, but he was able to gain at least three or four yards out of it. Ismi really wanted that football. He wouldn't let Williams take it away from him, and Williams had to rip it out of his running back's breadbasket. Why not? He's the workhorse. Trips towards the wide side of the field. The handoff. Nope. Williams pulled it and will slide in at the 27. Well, so I thought a he had slick move in the backfield. <laughs> I thought he had it off just then. I was just trying to take my glasses one more time. I thought I was seeing double. 21 14. The Wildcats with the lead and threatening to go up by two scores. Single back set. The handoff is broken up in the backfield as Washington was the rusher. Desmond Young was the defender and was able to wrap him up. It'll bring up second and ten. Williams play action, pump fakes, tucks it, runs it. He's got the 25, the 20, the 15, and is shoved out of bounds and onto the track, and that'll be an extra 15 tacked on to the end after the hit by Donald Rutledge. Wow, Rutledge looks like he could not hold his, his brakes there. He wanted to get there and get it tackled on him. And so that penalty will be costly as it puts the Wildcats in even better position to try and take a two-score lead for the first time this evening. Just the second penalty on the evening by the Tigers. Last week, 16 penalties against SSU over at FAMU. And that was a lot contained that the Tigers have been pretty good as far as less penalized team in the last year or so. Last year, as you just mentioned, the least penalized team in the conference during conference play. Yeah. Washington is the single back just to the left of Williams in the gun. The handoff follows the right guard and is swallowed up around the five. You know, the Wildcats now, they're beginning to start banging and banging. You know, the thing is about ball control and moving the ball down the field and taking as much time off that clock as possible. Banks so far with three tackles on the night. Williams, quarterback, keeper, races for the corner and has his angle closed off and will be shoved out of bounds. Well, that was on Williams. If Williams ran a little harder, he might have made it to the pylon, but he kind of slowed up a little bit, thought that he had a cape walking to the end zone, but the Tigers really closed in on him on that one. Vanquest Bonner was the one who shut the door and forced third down. Williams will work with two tight ends. Handoff. 
And into the end zone go the Wildcats. It's Tupac Ismi. Tupac's in the house, y'all. <laughs> Ismi. What a run by Tupac Ismi there. I tell you, he's the workhorse tonight. You got to give that guy the gold medal tonight because he's definitely been working tonight for the Tiger, for the Wildcats. I'm sorry. Excuse me, uh, Wildcats fans. Makes it a 27-14 ball game. Hernandez on for the extra point. Snap is back. Hold is down. The kick is blocked, and then it somehow scoots over the crossbar and is good for a point. 28-14, 11-13 to go in the third quarter. We head to a timeout. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Possibilities. What we deliver by delivering. (laughs) Back in Savannah, Spencer Turkin, Curtis Foster with you, 28-14. The Wildcats extend their lead. 11-13 to go in the third quarter. Well, we need a big play by Baldwin here on this uh, kickoff return. It'll be Durham and Baldwin back deep. Wobbly kick will head out of bounds, and that will be an illegal procedure. Jamani Francis kickoff goes out of bounds. Flag on the play. And that's the first time this season that Francis has kicked one out of bounds. Well, Spencer, let's say this here. This is the biggest series of the game here. For the Tigers, for, most definitely. For the Tigers. You know, can we answer the call of the Tigers? Or will the Wildcats answer on defense to stop the Tigers? This can determine the fact of the ball game here. Devon Gibbons will quarterback the Tiger offense. He has Rashad Saxton to his right in the backfield. The handoff. Saxton able to turn the corner across the 40 and he bumps into some traffic and down to the turf he goes at the 41. I tell you, I, I really like that read by Gibbons there. That was an awesome read by Gibbons. It'll bring up second and three. Gibbons getting the new play from the sideline. Against Bethune Cookman last year, went eight for 19, 58 yards, was sacked six times as the rush towards the near side for Saxton, and he is wrapped up in the backfield and dropped. It'll be a loss of seven on the play as Joseph Johnson, the senior from Midlothian, Texas, with the tackle for a loss, his second of the season. And that's one thing that the Tigers did not want to go backwards on this. They're trying to go forward. They did not want to lose those yardage, a third, making a third and about 10 now. Gibbons will set the offense. Two receivers either side. Saxton is still the single back. Sophomore takes the snap. Pressure on. Dumps one off quickly. And it falls incomplete as James Kicklider was the intended receiver along the 35-yard line. It looked like Gibbons had to get rid of that a little quicker than what he anticipated on being because the pressure was really coming on from the Wildcats there. Giovanni Lugo on to punt this one away. Kevon Mitchell is back to receive the punt with 9.55 to go in the third quarter. And the Wildcats leading it 28-14. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Savannah State has struggled in the second half of ball games. Being outscored 45-0 in the third quarter so far this year. High booming punt by Lugo is fielded by Mitchell back around the 10. He'll advance it to the 30, scoots inside, makes another move at the 35, and a flag comes flying in at the end of the run. That's got to be a hole in over there somewhere. With all that dancing and hooping and shooting and wiggling and twirling, and it's got to be a hole somewhere with the Wildcats. As we await the call from our referee, Eric Green. 
Don Gray Johnson's the umpire. Eric Blunson is the head linesman. There's a block in the back on Bethune Cookman, so the return is coming backwards. Ryan Dillard, the line judge, side judge is Justin Ford. Terrell Turner is the field judge. The back job judge is Chad Holtshue. And the center judge is Mark Comer. And he said, who made that call was uh, uh, Judge Eric, what, Eric Green? The white cap, yep. Yeah, that's your uncle. <laughs> oh, is it not? <laughs> Twins to the left of the formation for the Wildcats. Pass over the middle. He's got Robinson, and that will be good for a first down. Tigers showing pressure. Hand off up the middle. And the Cats are able to gain a few. Washington on the rush. Cam Brown up to six tackles on the night. It'll bring up second and five. Rutledge showing blitz. He drops back. And the rusher is dropped in the back. It's Washington who was wrapped up and brought down by McCray. McCray did a good job as, as going through the hole there, stopping Washington there. It was a great job going right through the technique, one take gap there. It'll bring up third down for the Wildcats, who are four of nine on the day on third down. Coming into the evening, the Tigers were worst in the conference at preventing teams from converting on third down. Williams comes over to the near side, dumps the pass off. He's oh. got Mallard, who squeaks free into Tiger territory and is finally brought down at the 31-yard line. Wow, did you see those cats? There got a is flag. a flag back at the 48 of the Wildcats. Spence, I want to say what a run. I mean, you saw the Tigers, the finishers bouncing off, bouncing off, you know, and, and he just kept running and running. But I think we, Tigers got blessed on that one there. There's a flag out there. An eligible man downfield. But you're right, the six foot six, 250 pound redshirt sophomore, Teron Mallard out of New Bern, North Carolina, with an incredible run after the catch. But it was negated with the flag. It'll bring up third and 12. Williams will send two receivers out to the right side. Play action. Excuse me, it's Israel now that's in. He'll set his feet, throws along the sideline, and it's intercepted. Isaiah Bennett comes up with the INT and he has a pick against Bethune Cookman in back-to-back -back years and what a great pick by Isaiah Bennett there he just read, stayed back and read the quarterback eyes great job by the defense the defense has come up big once again now this offense need to sustain a drive here so the Tigers have a chance to get back into this ball game. As T.J. Bell will work from the shotgun. Kick lighter is slot left. Comes in motion, play action. Bell looking downfield. Fires one along the sideline for Saxton, who cannot haul it in. It fell off his fingertips and down. Holy macaroni. It was in his hands, and he just bobbled it and could not get a hold to the ball. If I'm the Tigers team, I'll say you need that. 
It was a bad throw over his head. It'll bring up second and 10, 28-14. The Tigers trail. Bunch trips for the Tigers. Using a four-man set. Elijah Shaw is the single receiver to the right. Redshirt sophomore has some time. He'll run and is angled out of bounds by Kennedy and Duque. The Tigers had nowhere to go on that play there. It'll bring up third down just inside of that initial marker on the chains is the line of scrimmage. Bell will use a four wide set. Seven on the play clock. He'll need to hustle here with three. Takes the snap with one showing. Drops back, throws to the right side, and the pass is broken up by Elliott Miller. Elijah Shaw was the intended receiver, and the Tigers will have to punt yet again. I tell you, he needs to bring that ball down just a little, just a little lower level to give the receiver opportunity to catch the ball. I know, I mean, they say that you're supposed to be a great receiver when you jump up and catch it, but at this point, give him an opportunity to catch the ball. Well, this has been the Tigers' issue all season long. You make a great play on defense or on special teams, and the offense has been unable to capitalize on these opportunities. That is so true. And now we have a whistle and a flag. Delay a game call against Savannah State. Will back the Tigers up five more yards. Lugo. Send this to Mitchell. Has to retreat. Will let it bounce. It'll take a Tiger roll inside the 15. Now back across the 15 and is finally down. But there is a flag on the play. Back near where Giovanni Lugo was kicking from. 6.32 to go in the third quarter. And so the Tigers will keep the football after a leaping penalty. And, you know, the Tigers are getting a lot of opportunity here. I mean, so we got to continue, you know, to try to sustain the drive here because, you know, we're getting the ball back, opportunities. We can't, can't keep blowing these opportunities. 6.32 to play in the third quarter. The Tigers trail by two scores, 28-14. And have now been bailed out by a personal foul call against Bethune-Cookman. Just the third penalty on the day for the Wildcats. First and, ten Tigers. Balls on the -yard line. and Devon Gibbons is now in to lead the offense. A handoff to Saxton around the left side. He crosses midfield and is popped as he gets to the 48. And as we talked about earlier, it's controlling the ball, giving the defense an opportunity to rest. And this is what the Tigers are doing right now. But one thing, I have not seen the Tigers go back to Paris Baker. That was they targeted at the beginning of the game. They have not went back to Paris Baker since the touchdown. Tigers with a few really big tight ends on their roster. Paris Baker, Tyler Hagan. Hagan is the slot man right. Gibbons, the quarterback keeper, the ball is on the deck. And it appears that Bethune-Cookman fell on it, but we'll see who comes up with the football at the bottom of the pile. The Wildcats say they have it, and they do. So a costly turnover by Devon Gibbons and the Tigers puts Bethune-Cookman. 
and, and look, some pretty good field position. And look like we just missed the block over there on on the left hand side. The tackle there, uh, Cookman just came in untouched there. It he, looked like he was a little offside though. T.J. Jackson coming uh, off the field, holding his shoulder. So we'll keep an eye on the left guard for the Tigers. As Bethune Cookman will head out onto the field. Israel is the quarterback. The redshirt sophomore from South Carolina. It's a reverse to Jackson, turns the corner at the 40, and he has daylight at the sideline, to the 20, the 15, and steps out of bounds. What a reverse play by the Cookman Wildcats. Great job at fool the whole Tigers defense. And the Wildcats are quickly back into the red zone. Israel hands the ball off to Washington. He's able to plow ahead to the 11. Number 34, Isaac Washington on the carry. He's tackled by number 30, Walter Yates. Four-yard gain. There's a player hurt down on the field there. And there is another injured Tiger. It appears to be Stephen Banks, and that would be just about the most costly injury that Eric Rayburn's team could suffer. He has his helmet off and is coming off the field. I can't really tell whether he's in a lot of pain or just disappointed. We're going to take a quick time out here. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. ESPN Plus has a free trial. Okay. The food that we are consuming right now, not free. 8 14, Bethune Cookman leading Savannah State here at TA Wright Stadium on the campus of Savannah State University. 4.57 to go in the third quarter. BCU into the red zone for the fifth time today. So far, three of four from inside the 20. Israel drops back, looking, throws over the middle, and completes the pass in the end zone. It's Kevon Mitchell for the touchdown. That was great recognition by Williams there, hitting Kevon Mitchell right down the seam in the middle. Uh, I think we talked about the middle before, the being left wide open. It's Mitchell's second touchdown of the day, and it puts Bethune-Cookman up 34-14. The extra point on the way by Hernandez. Snap is back. Hold is down. The kick is good. 35-14. Bethune-Cookman out in front. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference football on ESPN3. Four thirty-six to play in the third quarter. Bethune Cookman out in front, thirty-five fourteen. As Giovanni Francis will kick this one away to the Tigers. It'll be Jamichael Baldwin and D'Angelo Durham awaiting the kick. Uh, Baldwin definitely need a good, good return out here. Let's see if he puts up on the board here. Still a lot of time left in the ball game. Uh, you know, as I always say, anything can happen in the MEAC. Baldwin will field it at the 5, races ahead to the 20. He has a lane at the 25, cuts it outside of the 30. He's to the 40, slides and loses an edge, but is somehow able to get to midfield. Though they'll say his knee hit the ground at the 44, I believe. The thing that I would like to see the Tigers do in this series here, Spencer, is do a lot more run blocking. That, that's where we're really hurting at, at the run blocking. What, I think if, if we can get a handle on the run blocking here, I think the Tigers will be decent as, as making some plays here. Tigers will need that as they try and stop the bleeding, part of a 21-0 run for Bethune-Cookman. Bell drops back, 
Rolfs one along the left side and leads his receiver a little too far. It was Baldwin who Bell tried to hit. Well, you, you definitely had pressure coming from the defense end of, of Cookman there, so put a lot of pressure there on him. Jalen McLeod is the tailback. It'll be a single back formation with stacked receivers to the wide side of the field. Bell leans in, drops back, throws along the sideline, and again has too much touch on the football. As Jatorius Galloway, the 6'2 freshman from Bradenton, Florida, was the intended target. And I see the Tigers trying to go for a big play there, but I think that they, they, they still should just take their time, run the offense, short routes, you know, just get what they can down the field, not try to get it all back at once because it's not going to happen like that. And, uh, you know, we just got to get what we can. Cross the middle pass, drag passes, post passes. You know, even in the flats and the flare, you know, we can, we can do some of those, make some things happen. Third and ten. Bell under pressure. Throws down the field and is able to hit his intended receiver, James Kicklighter. You think they're going to go for it? Is it too early? Or? It appears that the Tigers will keep the offense out on the field with the ball spotted at the 49-yard line on the Tiger side. With 3.42 to go in the third. SSU so far this year, one for three on fourth down. Bethune Cookman has given up a whole bunch of fourth downs, 10 of 11 so far. Bell with the screen pass right from McLeod, able to scoot away. He's got the first down and more. And is finally pushed out of bounds, just shy of the 25. That was a good call by the Tigers coaching staff there. McLeod did a great job getting outside and keeping his feet moving to, to get the first down. And so it'll bring up first and 10 from the 26. Now movement along that offensive front. Harvey King, the sophomore out of Hilton Head, South Carolina, was unable to keep his composure in his stance. Well, there's a penalty against the Tigers. 35-14. 2.54 to go here in the third quarter. It'll bring up first and 15 from the 31. McLeod is the single back. High snap brought down by Bell. Has plenty of time. And will toss it down the sideline and out of play as his receivers were all marked very well downfield. Well, he definitely had a lot of time there. The, the Tigers offensive line did a great job as giving him the time. He just could not find a receiver. Brings up second and 15. As the Tigers who do not huddle are awaiting the play call from the sideline. Bell gets it and will send trips to the left side. Cloud the single back, five on the play clock. Takes the snap, looking down the field, throws, and it's almost intercepted. But again, Bell's pass just a little too high. Paris Baker, the tight end, the intended receiver. Well, I'll tell you, Spencer, I know I'm not the coach, and, you know, I don't know what the, the, the plans are, but the thing is I think we'll mix the play up and get a sense of urgency, do a little bit of running and outs, you know, get out of bounds and try to get down, you know, and just get a little sense of urgency in our offense a little bit more. It's about that time in the game where you have to put the pedal to the metal. Yes. The man in motion is Shaw. The counter handoff, McLeod. He is hit hard as he falls out of bounds. Around the 27. Marquise Hendricks was the first man in. Balls on the 
See, the clock is still running, and we're taking our time as, as far as getting the playoff. And the Tigers appear to be set to go for it again on fourth down. Fourth and ten. McLeod is the single back. Bell, play action. Looks towards the right side and leads McLeod too far into the end zone. And it's a turnover on downs. You know, Hendricks of, of the Wildcats, I mean, it's like we don't have an answer for him. I mean, he, he he's, he's driving off through the jungle and, and you know, just striping everything down, you know, that's cutting down the trees, the palm trees, whatever it is, coming down 95, you know, trying to get into the Tigers' backfield, and he's doing a great job. Seven tackles on the day for Marquise Hendricks. Last year against Savannah State had seven tackles as well. Yes. <laughs> so, Bethune-Cookman will take over, 35-14. Wildcats out in front. Israel is the quarterback. Sends two men out to the wide side of the formation. Israel rolls out. And he is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. Stephen Greaves in there on the stop. At this point right now, all the Wildcats want to do is just uh, run the clock, control the, the football game, and just let this time run off this clock here. Approaching the one-minute mark of the third quarter. So two straight weeks that Bethune-Cookman has reached the 35-point mark. Israel play action. The rush is on. And he gets the pass away, but a big hit along the far side after the reception was hauled in. And it'll bring up third down. Alfred Adams came up with that reception. Israel rolls out. The chase is on from Banks. He can't get him. Sets his feet. Looking downfield. Fires. And completes the pass to Stephen Francois along the Tiger sideline. Bonner on the stop. It'll bring up fourth down, but that will be the end of the third quarter. But this Tiger defense has come up big on a couple of occasions here, so it's time for this offense to try to do something. We head to the fourth quarter, 35-14. Savannah State trailing Bethune-Cookman on ESPN3. Nice catch, my man. That's going to be on Sports Center. Welcome back to TA Wright Stadium as Bethune-Cookman leads Savannah State 35-14. With a fresh 15 on the clock here in the fourth quarter, Giovanni Francis punts this one away to Jermichael Baldwin. And it will take a Wildcat roll inside the 30, where it is downed. That was a good high punt there, Baldwin. But let, let's talk about, I know we got a little few minutes is. You know, we, we talked about controlling the clock and the time of possession we talked about. But Thune Cookman has controlled, the possession time is 28 Point nineteen seconds to Savannah State sixteen forty one. Wow! To Total go along with that, twenty three first downs for Bethune Cookman in that time. Yes, and the Tigers only has six first downs. Gibbons will hand the ball off to McLeod, who's able to rush ahead for a few yards. And, and you, it's talking about total yards of offense. But Thune Cookman has 67, 355 yards. The Tigers have 37 plays with 131 yards. Holy macaroni. Explains why the Tigers are having such a hard time finding the end zone. Is 
Gibbons, quarterback keeper, and he will be wrapped up and brought down on the opposite side of the 35. He's tackled by number 31, Devin James. Devin James, the sophomore from Port St. Lucie, Florida, is able to make the tackle. And it'll bring up third down with five to go. Tigers so far today, one for nine on third down. Gibbons tosses out to the near side from McLeod, able to turn it up, and he has the first down and more across midfield to the 40, and he is dropped out of bounds. Kevin Thompson chased him down. Uh, again, you know, even on the screen play, we got to get better on our run block. You know, even though it was a screen play, we got a lot of yards out of it. Imagine if we'd have got out there in front of him and ran block, we could have went to the house. It could have been a payday for us. So the Tigers' drive continues. Okay, Glider in motion. The handoff comes near side. It's Saxton down the sideline. He's got room and is shoved out of bounds from behind by Jamari Laguerre. And, and I tell you what I'm seeing from the Wildcats, they're starting to slice inside, and the Tigers are starting to bungle them in, and we're coming to the outside running the ball. It's a great job by the Tigers. So the Tigers are into the red zone for the second time today. It'll be first and ten from the 11. Gibbons the quarterback, Saxton the single back. Sweep right, Saxton finds a hole and is into the end zone. Give them six. Touchdown, Tigers. A great job by the Tigers offense. And you look at the time on the clock, you wonder where have this offense been for the last, what, 30 minutes or so. Where have it been? 35-20, SSU trailing with 12-23 to play in the fourth quarter. And Giovanni Lugo is on for the extra point. Snap is back, hold is down, the kick is no good. And for the second straight game, Giovanni Lugo has missed an extra point. Well, I tell you what, Spencer, I, I couldn't recognize the name of number 87 for the Tigers, and he had a great block to spring Saxton. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Nice catch, my man. That's going to be on Sports Center. To T.A. Wright Stadium as Bethune-Cookman leads Savannah State 35-20 in the fourth quarter. 12-23 to go. And, you know, Spencer, with the, the guy that I talked about earlier, number 87 for the Tigers was Hagen, the tight end. I mean, he did an awesome job blocking to spring Saxon on that touchdown play just a few minutes ago. Lugo will kick this one to Jimmy Robinson. He fields it at the 5 and brings it ahead to the middle of the field, 15. He's at the 25, takes a hit, and appeared to be down. The officials did not blow the whistle, though, and he'll, he's able to advance it to the 32-yard line in between the two hash marks. Damian Stevenson again with another special teams tackle. But, you know, I, I, I'm going to take some down and limb. It's 12 minutes and 11 seconds left for the ball game. We can come up with a big turnover here and score. You might see a different ball game here. You know, as I was saying, anything can happen in the MEAC. You never know what can happen in the MEAC. I don't think anybody expected Florida A&M to go to Durham and blow out the Eagles today, 55 Not at all. Snap is back to Williams. Play action. Tosses it out to the far side. The pass is hauled in along the BCU sideline. As Malik Jackson, the graduate student, is met by Vanquez Bonner. He'll bring up second down. Balls on the 38-yard line. Second and five. Second and five for the Wildcats. Two receivers to the wide side of the field. Savannah State dials up the blitz. Ismi with the rush. 
And he's dragged down shy the first down marker at the 41-yard line. I tell you, Isby is still working and grinding hard here for these Wildcats. Third down, upcoming for Bethune-Cookman. Isby with 58 yards on the evening. Bunch trips formation being shown by the Wildcats. The handoff up the middle, and he's brought down in the backfield. It's Desmond Young who was able to wrap up Isme. That didn't fool the Tigers' defense at all. It brings up a fourth down. It will bring up fourth down, and the punt unit is on for the Wildcats. Giovanni Francis will kick this one away, or at least line up to. It is fourth and one. Jermichael Baldwin back deep. He's inside the 20. Snap is back. Nice high booming punt fielded by Baldwin at the 20 with the fair catch. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Go for everything now. Welcome back to Savannah as Savannah State trails Bethune-Cookman 35-20. to SSU with the ball, 10-21 to go in the fourth quarter. T.J. Bell is in as the quarterback. Quarterback keeper scoots ahead across the 25 and is hit as he falls at the 27. I suppose at this point right now, the Tigers need some big plays right here to move the ball downfield. They definitely got to get a sense of urgency and keep moving rapidly. Bell does work quickly. Time is of the essence here. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Inside of 13 seconds on the play clock now for SSU. The redshirt sophomore goes play action. Throws over the middle and leads his receiver a little too far for the third time here in the second half. Wow, that was close there. It was the right read. Right read. Just could not execute. Third down, bring up third and five for the Tigers from their own 26. Savannah State has scored. Just 12 points in the fourth quarter this season. As this one falls incomplete. Elijah Shaw was the intended receiver. Yeah, they tried a wide receiver quick slip screen there. Just a little too high. And that'll quickly bring up fourth down, and the punt unit is back on again for the Tigers. So Lugo is on to punt. Mitchell to receive. And that's what we didn't want to see a one, two, three out here, you know. And we was hoping that we could move the ball down and maybe put some points on the board. That that hurts right there. Lugo gets a nice punt off. And will take a Tiger bounce and roll out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. I, I see that Banks was hurt earlier, but he has running back on the field and jumping around like he's ready to go, you know, exciting ball game for him. Stephen Banks, uh, one of the top defenders in the MEAC. Uh, Curtis, we've been made aware that almost every NFL team has been in to see him during practice and through the few games that the Tigers have had this season. Exactly. This is a player to watch throughout the rest of the year here. I'm quite sure this young man will get a shot to go somewhere on some level. It'll be Williams in as the quarterback. Washington, the tailback, takes the handoff and is met by Malik Simmons. He breaks free, though, and is across midfield. Down the sideline he goes as Rutledge angles him out of bounds into the BCU sideline. 
That's good running by Washington. He's, he held his balance. And the Tigers, got they got to wrap up on these tackles. Williams will go trips to the wide side of the field. We have a whistle and a flag. It'll be a false start on the offense. 8.51 to go here in the fourth quarter. Bethune-Cookman out in front, 35-20. to 20. It's been a relatively clean game, Curtis. Just nine penalties between the two teams this evening. Well, one thing I didn't like to see, Spencer, I just saw Banks coming out of the game hopping a little bit. Never want to see one of the top players in the conference hurt. He, he can't impress at that point. Quick snap. No drop by Williams. He throws over the middle and completes the pass. pass to, number to Brian Jefferson. Second and four now for Bethune-Cookman. Three receivers out to the top. Williams hands the ball off to Washington. He is wrapped up and brought down by Aaron Robinson. Yeah, I get good. This, this Tigers defense has been playing hard tonight. Uh, you, you know, it, they've been playing a, a lot of football. And on the field a lot too as well. And you know, you, you gotta give your defense rest. Bunch trips formation. Williams out of the gun. Looks screen, throws it. And the Tigers read it the entire way. As Kevon Mitchell was wrapped up on contact. Second and 12 for the Wildcats. Approaching the seven minute mark here in the fourth. Two by two formation. Williams steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. The pass is tipped and falls to the ground as the Tigers had a few opportunities to snag that one. Great job by this defensive backfield of the Tigers. And, you know, they have been doing a great job. Uh, this Tigers have come up. This defense has come a long way, especially these cornerbacks and DBs. It's third and twelve now for Bethune Cookman. Malik Jackson is the receiver out to the Bethune Cookman sideline. Williams working shotgun. Play action. Throws over the middle and completes the pass to Kyrie Wallace. Who was wrapped up and brought down at the 20 by Vanquez Bonner. And it'll put a four in the box. And that was a good hit on Bonnet there. I mean, good way. Then let him go, then let him shake him at all. Bethune Cookman appears to be going for it here on fourth down. Kevius Williams will send three receivers to the bottom of the formation. And there's a false start along the offensive line. Jamal Savage, the left tackle, was a step ahead. You know, from here, it, it looks like you know, it was a false start, but it looked like McCookman was about to go again through the middle of the zone of the, of the Tigers there. And like the receiver's trying to get behind the linebacker there. It was wide open. So now it's fourth and ten from the 25. Six minutes even to play here in the fourth quarter. Williams works shotgun. Two-step drop, pump fakes, rolls out to the left side, sets his feet, lofts one to the end zone. It is batted up and tipped to the ground. Incomplete. And it's a turnover on downs. And that was good coverage by the Tigers' defensive backs there. They were all over him there. 
So the Tiger offense will have a chance to try and put Savannah State into this ball game yet again. We'll take a timeout on the field. 35-20 BCU on top. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Price guarantee, all for just $79.99 per month with a two-year agreement. Go to GetFios.com today. 100% fiber optic network. 100% phenomenal. A beautiful shot of downtown Savannah as we return to action here at TA Wright Stadium. Devon Gibbons is the quarterback, ducks under the pressure, throws over the middle, and the pass falls incomplete. Kick lighter was the intended receiver. It'll bring up second down and 10 to go. We need a big play right now with five minutes and 35 seconds left of this ball game for the Tigers. But I already know the cat says it's not going to happen here tonight. 35 20. 535 to play in the fourth. SSU sends three wideouts to the left. Gibbons, quarterback keeper, sneaks through the offensive line, is up to the 40, where he's tackled after gaining the first down. Devon Gibbons so threatening on his feet. Wow, I hope there's not an injury over there. Now a little pushing and shoving as the ball was loose on the floor, but the officials will say that SSU was down before it popped out. So the Tigers will continue this crucial drive. SSU, with time winding down here, needs to start working a little quicker. Well, they need a sense of urgency here. You know, we're still moving kind of slow. Three wideouts towards the Savannah State sideline. Gibbons, pump fakes, throws towards the left, and completes the pass. pass for the, the Tigers need to hustle and get on the ball and get ready for the next play. They're still taking their time getting to the line. Zara Benavi was the receiver who hauled the ball in. The junior from Boynton Beach, Florida. So Gibbons getting the play from the sideline. Tyler Hagen is the stand-up tight end off the line of scrimmage. The pitch towards the near side. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Bethune Cookman. As Marquez Ford. Came up with the fumble. The and that will put the Tigers in a rough position as they tried to make a comeback. And with 4.14 to go, it appears that their chance to close the gap may have passed by. Yes, it has passed by with the win. But, you know, you have created both teams, today, both clubs did an excellent job. Out here. Even though it's four minutes, still a few time left in the ball game. You know, you get credit both clubs. Both clubs came out, needed a win tonight. Uh, it, it always, one got to lose, one got to win. It's always that. But, you know, being competed and, and, and competing on the field, both clubs did that tonight. A new quarterback in for Bethune-Cookman. It's Jabari Dunham. As Isaac Washington was giving forward progress to the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of one on the play. It'll bring up second and 11 from the 45. The high snap brought down, handoff through the middle. As Washington again keeping the clock rolling. It'll bring up third down with four to go. Bethune Cookman huddling up, taking its time. Four seconds on the play clock. Dunham's going to have to hustle. 
gets the snap off in time. The handoff up the middle to Washington. He breaks free inside the 20 and is chopped down around the 15. Well, well the Wildcats are taking control of the game here, just trying to run the clock. Washington did a great job going through the hole there. And, you know, the thing is, hey, let's control the clock. Let's get out of this ball game. But a few minutes with two minutes, some left in the ball game. Let's go ahead and, and get out of this game here tonight and, and let's go home back to Daytona Beach, Florida and get ready for the games next week. Dunham working out of the gun. Takes the snap. Quarterback keeper evades the first tackler and is brought down from behind by Stephen Banks. Well, it seems like the crowd is starting to bail up out of here. And it was a good first half, first quarter. A lot of promise from this Tigers team. Stephen Banks now just six tackles away for 200 on his career. Thirteen seconds on the play clock. Dunham sends a man in motion. Takes the snap. The handoff to Washington has a lead blocker and is still moving the pile and finally brought down just shy of the goal line. Wow, that was some tough running by Washington there. So Dunham will line up quickly. Washington, the single back. Dunham tries to take it in himself, awaiting the signal from the officials. And they'll stop the clock as they sort out the pile. And it appears that he's been stopped short of the goal line. It'll bring up second and goal. I'm quite sure the Cats going to go at it one more time. Got three shots at it. And there was actually a penalty on the field. So that'll make it first and goal. Dunham under center. Washington behind him. The snap is fumbled, and SSU picks it up. Malik Simmons was hovering over the center and applied some pressure to the third-string quarterback. We'll await the official's call on the field. But the Tigers players say that they have the football. Instead, it will be second down. Clock is winding. Bethune Cookman does not have to run another play. We'll see if Dunham decides to line up and snap the football. Actually, he can just take a knee. He's going to drop back into the shotgun. Takes the snap. Play action, sets his feet, flings the ball towards the corner of the end zone. The pass is complete, and it is fumbled again as time expired. I I got a question, Spencer. What was the purpose of that? Just take a knee. What was the purpose? I, I, I don't see any purpose in that. The purpose is take a knee, the ball game's over with. Why would you try to score? Just take a knee. Uh, to be honest with you, Curtis, I, I really don't have a good answer for you as Mallard was the one who hauled that one in. And that is the ball game. The final score, Bethune-Cookman 35, Savannah State 20. Curtis, a, a tough one out here for the Tigers. Bethune-Cookman will head into homecoming next week against Mississippi Valley State back at home. And uh, they'll go ahead and 
to try and get another non-conference victory. Uh, Savannah State will welcome in Charleston Southern to town. It was part of a home-and-home home series. And so the Tigers uh, will have their hands full with that triple option offense of Charleston Southern. Yes, they will. And, uh, you know, I'm just disturbed about something that happened a few minutes ago with the bethune Cookman, where all we had to do was just take a knee and let the clock run out. But you wanted to score after that. You know, I, I don't understand that one. Maybe it's some other plan. But like you say, we got to get ready for Charleston Southern next week, which is the triple option play. And Cookman have to get ready for their homecoming next week. So both uh, teams going to have to just solve what happened tonight. Enjoy tonight. Tomorrow, got to get back to work, get ready for our next week's ball games. Well, for our producer, William Mitchell, my analyst, Curtis Foster, I'm Spencer Turkin. And for the rest of our broadcast crew, we say so long from Savannah, Georgia. The final score, 35 to 20. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody. Good night.